Hi everyone, this is a tutorial from dwbiconcepts.com. In this tutorial today, we will learn how to implement a product dimension table which is a slowly changing dimension of type 1 and with change data extraction from the source or incremental loading. For the purpose of change data extraction, we will use the concept of batch load control table. So let's go to the implementation in data services where I will show you how we design a batch load control table and what is the mechanism we are following to identify the change data extraction from the source and implement our SCD type 1 table accordingly. This is how our job looks like. First let's go into the initialization script. Now firstly have a look at the batch load control table that we have designed. This is a very simplistic design of a batch load control table but let at a later stage during the ETL best practices framework development we will learn how to implement a better batch load control table. But for the purpose of simplicity and implementation of slowly changing dimension with change data capture we used a very good and easy and small batch load control table. So over here we have considered a few columns one is the batch name which uniquely identifies which is the job that is currently running. Next we have the batch status. A batch status means what is the status of the job and the possible status values are success, failed and started. Next we have a column called batch start date, the date on which the extraction started and batch end date, the date at which the extraction ends. So on the next day, the entry in the batch end date will be the beginning or the starting point of the extraction. Next we keep a load date column to identify when this particular record was inserted into the batch load control table. Now as earlier we have done, we have initialized a global variable called dollar $sysdate with the system date function. Next we have used a CDC date global variable and within this we have used a SQL function to extract the max of the batch in date where the batch name is the a current ongoing batch job in this case we have a batch name of product dimension so this is a global variable batch name has been assigned to product dimension so in the batch load control table it will try to find what is the maximum batch end date for the product dimension that exists in the batch load control table with an batch execution status as success. If at the very first day there is no entry for this product dimension in the batch load control table then we are using the start date as 1900-01-01. Next we mark an entry into the batch load control table. So over here we are using a SQL function insert into batch control values the batch name that is the product dimension the batch execution status that is started followed by the start date of the extraction that is the CDC date and the batch end date is currently populated as null because this date will be finalized based upon the job execution status whether it is a success or failure and it will be updated at a later stage and next the job load date let us suppose that we are running the job on 20th, so the system date, the 20th of 7, 2013. Next go into the data flow. Over here, this data flow looks exactly the same what we have implemented earlier in our video tutorial 1. We are performing a lookup on the target dimension table. Next we are using a strategy to identify which are the records are marked for insert and which records are marked for update based on the lookup value of the target records. So whenever a new record is coming from the source which is not present in the dimension table, we are going to flag that record as insert and whenever a record comes in from the source and that have a corresponding entry in our dimension table, then in that case we need to update or mark that record for update. We are using a router case transform to provide two flows, one for the insert and one for the update. In the insert part, in order to 
generate a surrogate key we are using a key generation transform that will generate a surrogate key for our product dimension table during insertion and at the time of update we are using the map operation transform to convert the normal operation code to opcode update to update the corresponding entry in the dimension table the only difference over here is that during the extraction earlier we were extracting the entire source over and over again but in this scenario we are considering that our source table is having a column let's say last updated date based on this date we can identify whether a record has been modified or altered or a new record has been added since the last extraction date so based on this logic we are implemented our extraction our incremental extraction like this so in the work where clause we have put the last updated date must be greater than or equal to the cdc date and that cdc date is the last extraction date from the source for the product dimension so now let's go and check uh, our finalization script so over here like previously we have used a overflow file in order to handle the rejected records like earlier so in case of any exceptions arising while execution of the jobs we have a catch block within which we have entered a script so whenever there is an error we would obviously like to raise an exception so that the job status should be shown as terminated we don't want the job status to show as completed when there is any exception that has been handled but in my case i don't want to um, show it as completed so before that raising an exception we also need to update the batch control table to set the status as failed so for this case we are using a sql function update the batch control table set the batch execution status to failed when the batch and the batch end date to the cdc end date where the batch name is the current batch that is executing and having a batch status as started so whenever the job was starting so we identified the row using the batch name product bin and the batch status was started next we want to update the same table which batch status as failure and batch end date as that of the cdc date so during the next day's extraction it will again start from the previous uh, last day's successful extraction uh, end date batch end date now if everything goes smooth our job completed our data flow completed successfully every process have been completed then we can have two scenarios over here let's first discuss the normal scenario in case there is no problem within the job then we need to update the batch control table with the status flag execution status as success so over here we are using a sql transform update batch control and set the batch status to success and end it to the system date that is the till date the extraction has been done and where the batch name is the current batch name which is a global variable having product dimension and the batch status has started because during the initialization the batch status was started for producting so this is how a typical entry in a batch load control table looks like so over here let's say on the first time when we kicked off the product dimension job it will be having a status of say started next it will have a batch start date the batch end date will be a null followed by a load date of the record the date when the record was loaded next if the job failed then in that case the batch end date will be same as the start date so over here it will be 01 next suppose on the uh, next very run it will again initiate a new entry mark a new entry in the product dimension and in case of successful execution it will put the system time stamp that is a system date over here at the batch end date with the batch status as success and following this table will go on increasing with marking each and every entry to identify the last date of extraction or capture from the source and in this way we are able to handle or implement uh, uh, the change data from the we can capture the change data from the source table and implement our slowly changing dimension of type 1 this is for the day 
hope you like the video